Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a special surgeon question and answer session all about mitral valve, bacterial endocarditis. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Duck Tin Pham, who is a leading cardiac surgeon at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Pham, it is great to see you again. Thanks so much for being with us today. Yes, Adam, good to see you again as well. And thank you for having me on heartvalvesurgery.com. Yeah, we're going to be talking all about mitral valve endocarditis, which is a big topic for our community. But first, a question for you, Dr. Pham. Why did you want to become a cardiac surgeon? Adam, that's an easy question. It's one of those careers where you go into where the rewards are so phenomenal. As a cardiac surgeon, I'm not only saving lives and helping patients live longer, but I'm actually making them feel better. And that's actually rewarding not only for myself, but for the patients and their families. Dr. Pham, I love hearing how you are not just fixing people's hearts, but making them feel so much better. And valve therapy is one of your specialties inside cardiac surgery. Why was that so attractive to you? Valve surgery in particular, you know, most patients are coming in very symptomatic. Their lifestyle is very limited by their valve disease. And not only are, are we fixing that, we're a lot helping them live longer, but then they're going to back to a quality of life that is much better than even before. So Dr. Pham, let's talk all about valves. Uh, we got four in the heart, right? The aortic, mitral, pulmonary, and tricuspid. Can you help the patients out there understand what do heart valves do? Adam, so the role of the valves is to control the flow of the blood through the heart. The blood is designed to go through the heart in one direction and one direction only. When the valves don't work, when they leak, for example, the blood starts to flow backwards, and that's why patients develop heart failure and symptoms. So Dr. Pham, this is serious, right? Heart failure is something a patient doesn't want to hear. Are there other risks that patients should know about? I mentioned heart failure, but that's really a catch-all phrase that medical folks tend to use to encapsulate all the symptoms and problems that can occur when the heart or the valves within the heart don't work well. For example, pumping action of the heart will fail as well, and patients will retain fluid, they'll develop atrial fibrillation, um, they'll get very symptomatic and aren't, won't be able to do normal daily functions when that happens. So quality of life can be compromised, the patient's health can be at risk, and one of the causes is bacterial endocarditis. For a patient who's never heard that term, Dr. Pham, what does that mean? Bacterial endocarditis is essentially an infection of the heart itself. And in particular, the most common areas of the heart that are involved are the valves. So as the valves get infected, the bacteria starts to damage the valves and causing them to either leak um, or worse yet, start to erode into actual structures of the heart. Dr. Pham, can you talk about how this infection impacts the mitral valve? The mitral valve is less likely to get infected of all the other valves in the heart, but when it does uh, and then starts to leak, patients can get pretty symptomatic pretty quickly. Dr. Pham, if I'm a patient, one of the questions I might be having is, how did I get this infection? For a lot of patients who develop it, bacterial endocarditis, we often don't really find a cause or etiology uh, for the infection itself. Uh, there are small percentage who develop it from uh, dental infections uh, or just trauma, skin trauma. Generally, those are patients who are immunocompromised, but for most patients with a healthy heart, the chances of developing endocarditis is low. Dr. Pham, now let's talk about what you and your colleagues there at Northwestern Medicine specialize in, which is the treatment of bacterial endocarditis and valves issues. Can you share with the patients the different approaches you might use to treat a valve that has been infected? The first thing I would say to patients who are diagnosed with bacterial endocarditis is that they seek medical care at a facility that has a truly a heart valve team approach to heart disease. And by that, especially for patients with endocarditis, I mean a center where they have access to cardiology, cardiac surgery, but also a strong infectious disease team that will help guide some of the antibiotic treatment. And so if I go to that center, what are the available therapies you might use to treat someone with endocarditis? For most patients, the first line of treatment would be to start off with IV antibiotics to target the bacteria that's being cultured from their bloodstream. Uh, but there are a small percentage of patients who end up needing surgery. And let's dive a little deeper on that, Dr. Pham. What types of surgery might you use? Types of surgery depends a little bit on the bacteria that's 
uh, involved in this bacterial endocarditis and how badly damaged the valves themselves are. Um, for the fortunate patient where there's a limited infection, uh, sometimes a valve repair may be possible, uh, but for those with large damage uh, to their valves or to other structures of the heart, uh, they may need a valve replacement. Can you share with us how often you treat endocarditis with a repair versus a replacement? The larger percentage of patients who develop bacterial endocarditis, um, the damage to the valves is large, bad enough that mo I would say most, the majority, 80% or more, end up needing a replacement. So if I'm a patient and I need to have a valve replacement, Dr. Pham, what are my options? So Adam, in terms of the valve type choices uh, for patients who need a replacement, there are two general categories, a mechanical valve or a tissue valve. Uh, there are pros and cons of either one. Uh, and it, the choice is, is really dependent on the patient and their lifestyle. Dr. Pham, specific to what we're hearing a lot about next generation therapies, transcatheter devices, are any of those in play for patients who might be experiencing endocarditis? Adam, for patients with active endocarditis, uh, unfortunately, the transcatheter devices are not yet uh, the ideal treatment. Uh, the first goal of the treatment is to remove all the sources of infection and then replace the function of the valve. Unfortunately, most of the transcatheter devices don't take care of that first part of the treatment. Dr. Pham, how do patients do after they've been treated for endocarditis with either a repair or a replacement? Most patients do really well after surgery for endocarditis. The vast majority of patients will be able to go back to a normal life with normal life expectancy and quality of life. Dr. Pham, I love all the information you've been sharing with our community today. And now the big question, I'm sure patients want to know, what are your top pieces of advice for a patient who has been diagnosed with bacterial endocarditis. The key thing for patients with the diagnosis of endocarditis is that they get treatment at a comprehensive center that offers a heart valve team approach. Dr. Pham, as always, thanks so much for taking time away from your busy practice there at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago and educating our community this time about bacterial endocarditis. Thanks so much. Thank you, Adam. It was my pleasure. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.